um, a, a couple of things that happened um, as this market grew. And, you know, we all thought, uh, like I said, I, I bought my land in 1997. So I've been here a long time, sitting on the sidelines. But as, as the market grew, we watched, um, you know, none of us thought it would end, especially when Bar Barnett Shale came. But let me tell you what an impact a new hotel opening has on the market. And this is based on the source strategies report, which I'll give you a copy of. And, and, and this is um, tracking back to the third quarter of 2008. With the opening of the uh, Comfort Suites, that, that uh, actually property did terrific when it opened. However, the market only grew 4.9% in revenue. So that meant that the 600 plus hotel rooms that were here all took a, a lesser share. Well, in 2008, things were still going up. In 2000, uh, I'm gonna go back to, in 2000, uh, the second quarter of 2009, for example, this was actually the uh, a reporting period that showed the, re the history of the Holiday Express and the La Quinta. Both of those were not in the, in the uh, revenue numbers for 2008, for the, for the uh, second quarter. That then, the total <coughs> revenue in the market was 15% less overall, total number of rooms rented. Yet we had 106, uh, uh, yeah, 136 more rooms added with the advent of those two hotels. So consequently, every, everyone's numbers continued to slide. Well, when you have a growing market, new product can in fact create more uh, overnight stays. However, when you've got a market that's flatlined and <coughs> is now declining, you know, the advent of additional product will only do nothing but compromise the market itself. So as we look at moving forward, knowing that the recovery period may be at least three years before we really see, you know, a change in elections, change in directions of the economy, uh, certainly the, you know, hopes that the nuclear power plant will in fact be uh, starting their uh, growth cycle. Uh, it just would be a total killer if this market allowed in <coughs> any other hotel product. Yeah. Because in, in, in reality, what, what's really happened for all of us is that the values of our properties, because based on the revenue numbers, continue to go down. And of course, the property taxes then that we pay are, are based on those values. And I can tell you that uh, my property, along with Nick's property and Patricia's property, the property values have plum plummeted in the last uh, couple of years based on revenue. So all of that is impacting this community because those are revenue dollars, tax dollars, and so on. So, Can I ask a question? Yes. How much have they gone down, or how much do you figure they've gone down this year from last year? Well, last year wasn't very pretty. So, okay. um, you know, we're, we're probably looking at about 15 to 20 percent okay. from last year. Yeah. Now, 09 uh, to from 08, it was def definitely down again. So if you take that, you know, most of our properties are coming in uh, way less than, than what we owe on our, owe to the bank. I mean, none of us could sell our properties today for what we owe the bank. So, you know, again, that's just that's all tax revenues back to the community. The reason why I asked, that's the same thing I heard from uh, the Granbury City Council about a month ago, that their revenues, all the taxes, and they're all going down by 15 to, anywhere from 15 to 30 percent. They didn't know for sure what was going to happen. And Granbury has a hotel moratorium. So that's really the, uh, the issue. We know this is kind of a, the first step and maybe baby steps getting it through the process, but we think we've got a great, uh, um, we got, we've got great product, great value, great assets here. 
we want to make sure that we're here to be able to uh, service this community. So uh, please uh, kind of understand our, our mission here. And uh, any other questions? Any of the council members? I just don't know whether we can, if we did anything, could, could we do it beyond, we couldn't do it beyond the next next election cycle, because we can't commit another council. I think that's something we have to check with the community, and I don't know, usually you can't commit meetings, but um, we, what we'll need to do is turn this over for our attorney to okay. find out some more information on it. Sure. Um, Small markets, large markets, all across the country are finally taking a position and saying, you know what, uh, we need to protect what we got. So, so we, anyway. can't, we can't put a moratorium on any new hotels now? I, I don't know anything. Well, the only thing you know, is that Granberry has got it. My question is, you know, under what authority does the city enforce the suffering? You may have an answer to that. Well, part of, uh, and Joe Sr. may be able to even answer this better than I, but what they did is they stipulated the size of the, um, uh, for example, they didn't really want any more limited service properties as such. They only wanted to have a full service property. Well, nobody in their right mind is going to build a full service property today because, first off, they couldn't get the financing for it. So they set some guidelines based on public space and, and F and B um, requirements. Is that right, Joe? Yeah, parking space as well, and uh, even some green areas. But uh, some of the communities that I've been involved with are requiring a certain uh, square footage for meeting space to the number of rooms that they have. The other thing that some have done is uh, use the specifications of the building materials and the design and so forth so that you just don't bring in a whole bunch of cracker box to the right. Sort of like I remember about one of the meetings I was at where you had talked about you know, going forward certain facades at the meet minimum criteria and standards and that. There's a way to get there. So we can do it through the ordinance. <coughs> Another thing the city of Granbury has done is they started asking that if you want to build a property, you can bring a brand new restaurant into the town. And with this market, I mean, nobody's ready to do that, so they're doing that to protect a new property from coming in. They're asking that you can bring an IHOP or anything like that along with your property. Of course, with this, we can only control inside the city limits. Mm -hmm. And we're a small city, unfortunately. Right. So we can only control the small area. <coughs> but I think it's something we need to look into personally. Any, anybody else? Thank you again for your time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Item number five is discussion and possible action on the following items concerning Glen Rose Economic Development Corporation. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'd like to give you an activity update from uh, actually the, the next item. We will discuss it uh, again, but uh, I visited with the uh, county commissioners this morning uh, concerning a pedestrian bridge uh, from Walnut Street across to uh, Heritage Park. Uh, we discussed three things, uh, pedestrian bridge, a low water crossing, and cantilevering a, uh, a sidewalk off the existing bridge as possible crossing points over to Heritage Park to hook up to uh, the river water. Uh, the county commissioners uh, looked at and talked about the proposal and they said in concept uh, they had no problem with us establishing a crossing at county property at Heritage Park. They would like to look at the details. Uh, they were more enthusiastic about a bridge and everything else, and they asked that uh, maybe I would go back and talk to some bridge vendors and see what they might be able to provide in the way of engineering studies and so forth. Uh,